Every now and again we need to cut circles, like this round frame. And a good jig can do this job a lot more accurately than trying to cut it freehand. When I decided to make this frame, I picked up one of Rockler's Compact Router Ellipse Circle Jigs. It made this job easy to do even on the first try. In this video, I'm going to show you how this jig works by routing a circle and an ellipse. First of all, here's what comes in the box. You get this phenolic jig arm that attaches to your router and a couple of knobs and T-bolts that have holes in the bottom of them. Here's the jig's phenolic base plate and these two dovetailed keys with brass pins on them fit inside the base plate and slide along these tracks. There's also four screws for attaching the base plate to your workpiece. The jig's arm is pre-drilled for compact routers from DeWalt, Porter Cable, and Bosch. It's not set up for Makita's compact router, but I'll bet an enterprising woodworker could drill a few more holes in the jig arm and make it work just fine for this router too. This jig will route circles up to about 24 and a half inches in diameter, and to do that, I've got the jig arm fastened to my DeWalt router and a quarter inch upcut spiral bit installed. But the style of the bit doesn't really matter. You could use a straight bit instead of a spiral bit if that's the bit you have. Now here's how to set things up for routing a circle. I'm starting by securing my workpiece to a sacrificial piece of hardboard underneath with double-sided tape. That'll keep things from moving around during the routing process. And here, I'm drawing two perpendicular axes in order to find the center point of my workpiece. Now, I'll mark the radius of the circle I want to make on one of these lines. These layout lines make it easy to center the jig's base plate accurately because it's got these little scribe lines milled into each corner of the base plate. So once I've got those scribe lines lined up with my layout lines, I know that my jig base plate is centered accurately and I can go ahead and screw it down. With the base plate set, I'll slide in one of these dovetailed keys. Insert the key into the dovetailed slot that's drilled with two holes. Line up the holes and lock the key in place with two more screws. That little brass pin on the key establishes my center point for routing. So I can set one of the T-bolts in the arm onto that pin. With the knob for the T-bolt loose, I can slide the arm out to align the edge of the router bit with my radius mark. Once things are lined up, tighten the knob. I'm all set to route this circle, but make sure to set the cutting depth of your router carefully so you won't cut down too far. You want your final routing pass to be just a little bit deeper than the thickness of your workpiece. Now go ahead and route the circle, moving the jig clockwise. Plan to cut through your workpiece in several passes of increasing depth. It's a good idea not to route more than about an eighth inch deeper with each pass to prevent overloading the router and potentially overheating or even breaking the bit. And there you have it, a perfectly routed circle. There's nothing tricky about this. Routing an ellipse isn't any harder, but there are a few more steps to the setup process. Here, we're dealing with two dimensions, a minor axis and a major axis. On this example, the minor axis is 16 inches and the major axis is 20 inches. The jig will accommodate minor axes that range from 6 to 19 inches and major axes that range from 11 to 24 inches. And the difference between the minor and major axes can't be more than 5 inches. So let's make another one of these ellipses. Again, my minor axis is 16 inches and my major axis is 20 inches. So I'm going to make a mark at 8 inches over on my minor dimension, or 16 inches overall, and 10 inches over on my major dimension, or 20 inches overall. For routing an ellipse, we're going to need to use both dovetail keys this time, because there are two pivot points that are going to have to slide past one another to navigate this shape. 
With the arm's two T-bolts registered on both pivot pins, I can align the bit with the layout mark on the major axis and tighten the rear knob that controls its travel. Then I can swing around to set the bit off of the minor axis layout mark and tighten the front knob to set its travel. That's all you need to do to set up the router for cutting the ellipse. And routing the shape is the exact same process as for routing a circle. Feed the router clockwise and let the arm follow the path that's now set by the dovetail keys. Route the shape in several passes of increasing depth. Even if you rarely cut circles or ellipses, a jig like this sure comes in handy when you do need it. And sooner or later, you probably will. Learn more about Rockler's compact router ellipse and circle jig at rockler.com. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine and thanks for watching.